this is an amazing place. We've got everything. We've got complete rural communities and really dense urban communities. We have incredibly wealthy places and really quite impoverished places and everything in between. That's what makes it interesting, but it also makes it a challenge because the people who live there are really different. <laughs> what we want for them are comparable outcomes. That's Nancy Florine, at-large member of the Montgomery County Council, speaking about the county she's represented since 2002 and where she's lived for more than a quarter of a century. Recently, she assumed the council presidency for a second time. That is unanimous. Congratulations, President Florine. Thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, Believe it or not, I'm not, I'm not much of a politician. I've never been in this for, for personal advancement, or I, I really never thought for an instant that this would be a goal of mine. I never ever. There's still plenty of work to do. It's really just to get things done. And through the years, she's gotten a lot done. A recent event in her neighborhood of Garrett Park brought together some of this county's local leaders. She comes with, you know, a professional background in issues around planning, around zoning. She understands how you have to think long term for the community and where we're going as a community, what investments you have to make now in order to realize that vision and that dream for the future. She's been very conscious of the role of women. Uh, she started Montgomery Women, which was one of the first nonpartisan groups of women to understand what are the needs of women as well as how to be in a position of power. So how does a person who never imagined running for political office become a politician? It was a process, one that started in a small immigrant community near Boston. I grew up in uh, Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm an only child. My dad was an immigrant from Sweden. Actually, he came over on the boat on his own in 1917. I mean, they were dodging U-boats and the like. He came clearly for the land of opportunity. And my dad started out in the usual trajectory. He started out as a chauffeur, worked his way around the country, drove a trash truck, picked cotton, and then uh, came back and got some training and became an electrician. My mother was also Swedish. Her parents had come from Sweden uh, themselves, so uh, she was born in Massachusetts. And, you know, they had a little enclave, immigrant enclave of folks with similar backgrounds, and that's, that's the community I grew up in. Being an only child had a big impact on Nancy. I certainly was a focus of my parents' attention. And uh, my father was an older parent. He was um, uh, over 50 when I was born. He was completely devoted to me. Every week we would go to the library and take out, you know, big gigantic pile of books. That was a real gift. Really got me focused on reading and, uh, and I read a lot because I was alone a lot. As I look back on it, I think, well, it gives you a lot of uh, confidence in yourself because you're not competing with anybody else. But on the other hand, you have to learn the getting along skills that uh, uh, other children learn within their family. In 1969, Nancy entered Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. She was the first in her family to pursue a college degree. I got to college and I found out there was a whole new world. My parents weren't sophisticated. I learned about the New York Times. Um, you know, I met people who were different from me. Um, that's, of course, one of the experiences that's important in going to college. You get out of your comfort zone. But for me, it opened up a whole new world. While at Smith, Nancy met David Stewart. When they both graduated in 1973, David did newspaper reporting, and Nancy attended law school. They married a year later. By 1976, Nancy had passed the bar, and David was in law school at Yale. Nancy's first job was for a small firm in Connecticut, where she was assigned to cases involving real estate. Up in Massachusetts and Connecticut, you know, they didn't have very sophisticated deeds and things. I mean, the property descriptions were from, you know, a rock over here, a certain rock over here to a certain tree over there, and I'd sort of drive around the countryside doing research on that sort of thing. Once David passed the bar in 1978, the couple relocated to Washington, D.C. There, Nancy began a job at the Justice Department. The best thing about the Justice Department is they just throw you in there. 
So, uh, you know, they sent little old me to uh, Delaware to defend the government against a whole array of high-paid energy lawyers out of Houston. Uh, you know, uh, at the time, I think I was six months pregnant as well. In 1980, by the time their second son was born, Nancy and David had moved to downtown Silver Spring. The demolition of a nearby home piqued Nancy's interest, and she was quickly swept into the world of Montgomery County land use litigation. Sort of like a lot of people, you know, you, usually it's because something has really ticked you off, right? Mm -hmm. And so you learn more about it. So I got involved, I challenged the building permit, I learned about the administrative process associated with doing that. Nancy determined that the planned height of the new building exceeded what was allowed. So she fought it, and the case went to the Maryland Court of Appeals. And I was right. <laughs> it turns out they actually had to remove a floor of the building, uh, but set a precedent for measuring things more, more carefully. That was sort of my trial by fire and land use in uh, Montgomery County, and that opened, opened the doors t to me. One door that opened was an appointment to the Montgomery County Planning Board in 1986. She was encouraged to apply by Norman Christeller, who was chair at the time. He later became a big influence. He was so passionate and, you know, he is the kind of guy who would just bang the table with a shoe over uh, principles of affordable housing and the like. What I do know, and I think I learned from him, is the importance of asking good questions. What is your planned expenditure on capital improvements for the current year? And really pursuing the responses if they're not responsive to your question. We get a lot of that. Uh, so that's uh, an important skill, I think. Nancy served two four-year terms at the planning board. Because her three children were still quite young, she appreciated the part-time schedule. You know, it was a great way to be involved, uh, but also uh, be able to, to be around for the kids. So it worked out pretty well. It actually got to the point, though, on Thursdays, that's the big day down at the planning board, my family would be annoyed with me if we didn't have a Thursday night meeting because they had their own routine. That was pizza night. <laughs> in 1990, when their children were 11, 8, and 6, the family moved to historic Garrett Park. I just fell in love with this house. I remember bringing my husband over and he didn't even come in. He said, okay. <laughs> of course, went through it after that, but uh, we just fell in love with it. It's an old house built in the 1890s, and of course, there's always something wrong. Uh, but it is, uh, it is fun, and it's been a great community to be part of. I think we have about 1,000 residents, uh, and, uh, but because it's small, it's very manageable, and it's easy to get involved. I, of course, got involved. Uh, when we moved here, I served on a variety of committees and then ended up uh, becoming its mayor. That was in the year 2000. Her biggest effort was to oversee the revitalization of the town's only commercial building. Built in 1890 next to the train tracks, Penn Place housed the town offices and post office. Its historic designation meant it must be preserved, but to be useful, it needed a major upgrade. Nancy successfully shepherded this project through to completion. Peter Benjamin also served Garrett Park as mayor. He both preceded and succeeded Nancy. Nancy is one of those people who is a natural leader. So she has always been one of those people who has pushed for change, pushed for things to be better, and made a difference in our town. In 2002, Nancy threw her hat into the ring for an at-large seat on the Montgomery County Council. Honest to God, the reason I ran for the County Council was at that time, there'd been a long-term argument going on about building the intercounty connector road. And because of my planning background, we had always assumed the construction of that road to support the communities in the up county. And I, I shared the frustration that people had that there, there'd just been arguments about it for years and years and years and nothing was getting done. So I was encouraged to um, jump in to support that project, and I did. So I got on the end gridlock slate. That was what I was on, and I got in, and I won. My husband is still a little mad at me because I told other people I was going to run for the county council before I talked it over with him. Something David confirms. Uh, it was a surprise. Uh, <laughs> 
and uh, it's something uh, I would have liked to know. She's been a great council member, though, and it's been a tremendous opportunity for her to uh, pursue her passion for public policy issues. So, you know, it was uh, the right thing for her to do. So he's mostly gotten over it. <laughs> David's career took a turn in 2007 when he returned to his first love, writing. To date, he's authored six books, each taking a look at moments in American history. Third David's books, um, actually his first one, which is a story about uh, recounting of how the Constitution was created in 1787. Um, the people who did that, who they were, why they did it. Um, I think if people read this more frequently, they would stop mouthing out about the constitutional issues out there. So he's quite prolific, and uh, I'm very, very proud of him. Remember, pharmacies are licensed and have... Uh, Nancy's uh, busy schedule pulls her in many directions. Standards. How does she stay grounded? Well, I'm a big fan of yoga. It's good for balance and it's good for concentration, frankly, because you really do have to empty your brain. So I do as much of that as I can. Uh, one of my ways to es escape stress as well is to be part of a book club. So I'm in two, and it's a great way to introduce you to new literature and other people's perspectives about that. You have to find ways to keep focused on who you are as a person. And it seems Lady, the family dog, also helps. I think she helps keeps us both sane, uh, forces us to be outside a couple times a day, <laughs> and uh, it's great to have unconditional love, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose my favorite place in Montgomery County is Rock Creek Park. Here in Garrett Park, we're right adjacent to it, which is nice, so um, I take the dog through there just about every morning on a long walk. Uh, we ride bikes through there, and it's a great respite from um, the traffic of the rest of the world, both in our brains and on the road. And uh, I think a green space is really critical to um, my comfort level and I think to most people. In 2011, Nancy discovered she had breast cancer. They caught it early and the prognosis was good. Now, nearly five years later, there has been no reoccurrence. But in this interview recorded the year following her treatment, she says the experience was a wake-up call. It's nothing like a health issue to get you to focus on your personal and family priorities. My family is out of state mostly, and so I make an effort, made extra efforts to go be with them when I can. This was a, a, a real wake-up call for them too. They're not, weren't used to me, uh, mom, being the one with something to to worry about. So. Uh, it, was, it was tough on everybody, but yeah, they've all been great. Nancy and David's children are all out in the world pursuing their passions. Nancy is proud of all of them, but she lights up like nothing else when talking about being a grandparent. There's nothing like dealing with small children, I think, because they really teach you what's important, you know? It's the little things. It's the personal contact. It's, you know, they're looking at that little tiny bug uh, seeing the world through a child's eyes is, is really uh, important and a great gift to us who've moved past that. Now in her fourth term as council member, Nancy Florine can reflect on accomplishments to date. There are many, but Nancy points to one in particular. I ended up getting the support of everyone to create what is called the Montgomery Business Development Corporation. And that was five years ago, and it's been in place since then, and it's done a great job in improving how we market Montgomery County to the world and how we are creating uh, job opportunities for our residents. Are we ready? Nancy looks forward to continuing to solve problems for the citizens of Montgomery County. And what we do not understand. She sees her collective experiences as a plus. Too. I like to say I've been on every side of these tables. I am familiar with the players and the issues and the perspectives of nearly everybody, whether they're the, the builder or the next door neighbor or the deciding body. <laughs>